Hey, Shubie Doodlers, how are you doing? I've been sorting out my archive of artwork and I've brought these two boxes down from the attic to share with you. And inside the boxes are the artwork and dummies and roughs and all sorts of stuff for my Lydia books, which were the first books that I wrote and illustrated. They came out in the Oxford Reading Tree way back in 1987. But now I'm going to open the boxes and share the secrets that lie inside. But let's not talk about it. Let's do it. Well, these are the six books as they came out originally in the Oxford Reading Tree in 1987. The Oxford Reading Tree was a sort of groundbreaking and uh, very popular reading scheme uh, that started back in 1987, I think, or 86, possibly 86. And I was just very lucky to be at the right place at the right time. Let's look inside this box. I think these are probably the very first Lydia books. They are, there's just three of them, Lydia and... Lydia, Lydia in the balloon, Lydia and her cat. It's quite hard to get this all in chronological order. I made these little books and started taking them uh, to show people. 10th of November, 83, for Lydia, a natural born fruitcake. So Lydia is my niece and she was about this age. She was in Baby Grows and I was at art college and I was going to stay with my brother in the, um, goodness, I was going to stay with my brother in the vacations, in the holidays. And they had a tiny little house. And so I would sleep on the floor in the children's room because that was the only space. And eventually I went up in the attic, in, in the loft space, <laughs> to climb up an old ladder, a rickety old ladder. And I just, seeing here, I have this box in my front room now, Walter Edmund Rayner. Uh, this was my grandfather's... Uh, military box. So one time I was staying, Lydia had uh, got really into teething. If you know anything about babies, they don't like teething. And <laughs> so I would get woken up, obviously, sort of early in, in, in the morning, sort of two, three in the morning with Lydia crying because of her teeth. And so I would take her downstairs and make her a cup of tea and give her some Calpol paracetamol, liquid paracetamol, and that would sort of sort her out. And I'd kind of tell her stories about what we'd done that day. So it was about a little hole in her, <laughs> holes, <laughs> holes in the seams of her uh, clothes. So, you know, they're passed down clothes and they're a bit stretched and how the wind would get in. So maybe it was a really windy night and I would tell her some sort of stories about what we'd been doing with her and her bigger sister going out. Um, feeding ducks and stuff like that. And then the little side Lydia went back to sleep. Lydia in the balloon. So I thought, oh, I, I can't remember. So maybe this was based on something that happened. I can't remember. Oh, Lydia was third. Mm, yeah. So this is totally inappropriate. You see, I, <laughs> I was still at Dark Cottage. <laughs> and you can't have stories about babies coming down and drinking alcohol. <laughs> mm, that's a nice thought, Lydia. I'm shocked, actually. Um, Lydia was helping herself to some pudding. She noticed something on the wall. Balloon. She's having a little bit more drink. <laughs> She's going to be paralytic. Um, yeah, and this is the kind of thing that happened in those days. I think children would find little sips of things and drink them. Uh, maybe they still happen. I don't know. I do remember her big sister having been going around drinking lots of things one lunchtime getting very very dizzy yeah they just thought she'd like to go back to bed and so she did very sensible uh lydia and her cat so their cat was uh, imaginatively called stripey cat <laughs> stripes was a, a lovely lovely natured cat who would always come and see the children so this actually this story is the one that really kind of got it going and this is this is almost as it came happened in the end but as I was um, writing these stories and illustrating them then as I say Lydia was kind of this age so she was uh, um, 18 months or something 18 months to two years didn't have a lot of hair I don't <laughs> and she was a baby definitely a baby and as I kept working on these 
stories. I, I just love how rough and quick and simple these are. Um, I, <laughs> you can't do this anymore. Anyway, Lydia and the cat both went back to sleep. Very sensible. Lydia's cat was very cosy. So I did these little books and um, I took them to my publisher then, NC Black, who really rather liked them. Um, these are some more here. This, I think these are blank here that I was going to do. Um, so this is <laughs> another set here. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we're up to five stories now. So I'd obviously been told, oh, we need more stories and need to make a set. Um, and how far have I gone? So, but again, she's still a baby and uh, the stories are getting sort of a bit tighter. What's the date here? 1984, so this is a, a year later, I think. Um, so we got now the balloon. <laughs> Still got alcohol involved. <laughs> and oh, I haven't even got any drawings in there. So uh, Lydia and the ducks. So this was something that we did an awful lot of, just going to feed the ducks. And it's kind of what you do with toddlers, isn't it? You go and feed the ducks. There are hundreds of them. They have plenty of old bread. Someone at the door. Lydia and the Lost Letters. So this is these are really just to sort of show or give a feeling for a, a little set. Part of doing this, I think, was was for me to feel this is a real thing. These are real books, uh, <laughs> and it's not because it, it was all still a dream at this time to to want to be a, a you know to, to want to be a published author, I suppose. Um, oh, these are getting much better. They're getting very very short. Uh, the text, the text, the text needed to be very short. So these are painted very, very quickly. No date. And the, here's another one. So the balloon. She's still getting drunk. She's still a baby, as well. Um, Lydia goes to the shop. So that's kind of getting there. A lot, lot less little thing. I need to do this. I need to do that. So it's planning and um, thinking about it. Does this have a date? I wonder. It's so helpful when there's a date. So what happened? Um, I think, I think this set here, or is it one of these sets? Let me think. That's, I think that's the one. So yeah. So here she is. She's still a toddler. <laughs> Done quite a lot of this, haven't I? 1985. <laughs> Lydia and the ducks. Though so she's still a baby here. Oh, we got a th from threatening swan. This is sort of <laughs> this is a nightmare from when I was a child being chased by a swan. I think. Mm, bit scary. Lydia goes to the shop. So she's getting a bit older now. Lydia. Oh, we still got some here that are, where she's still a baby. Lydia and the cat again, 1985. This is really light, fresh, kind of just draw it. <laughs> and here's this is another one so and the big wide world I don't remember that 84 the catch on Lydia's get but inside you see this is getting quite tight again so by this stage I had um, editors who were thinking hey this is nice yeah we, we like this let's work on this I, I think I remember first going to one and they were a book packager so they were the lady she would package up a book and then sell it to a publisher the whole thing and sell a big edition and she said it's great because you just get a big wad of money when it gets done rather than waiting for all these royalties to come in so well, that's good and that, but that didn't happen so I went to ANC Black and I was working on another book with them and I'd, I'd done I'd done a couple of things with ANC Black and so they were really helpful um, and they really wanted to do this as a little series. And you can see here, they and their mother are making shopping lists. <laughs> Something happened. Here, look, what a rainy day. Uh, <laughs> this is the garden. And so I had done all of these and then these books here were taken to the Bologna Children's Book Festival to look for foreign translations, potential foreign translations, which brings the unit cost down. And back in those days, a colour picture book just didn't go ahead without um, foreign translations, unless they knew it was going to sell hundreds of thousands of copies in English. I was really surprised 
later to find that they'd taken it to Bologna and they had changed the text. <laughs> and it <laughs> they changed the text quite a lot. And they made it um, in the present tense, whereas I'd had it in the past tense before. It changed the whole thing to the present tense, which I found really awkward. And something about it, I, I just didn't like what they'd done to it. And they came back and said, oh, terribly sorry. They load up the car, but the box is very heavy. It just didn't seem right to me. And they just completely changed my text. And they came back and said, terribly sorry, we're, you know, we're not going to be able to do this. You know, take it to another publisher and see if somebody else can um, maybe publish them. And so I did. Well, well, I sort of did. I had planned to go and visit, I think it was Octopus Box. <laughs> they were a bunch of sharks. I did another book with them, in fact. And they were in London. So I was going to go and show them my portfolio and take these books to show them. And I was living in Wild West Wales. So I went and stayed with my brother on the way, which meant that I'd got the train down to Oxford. So I thought, I'm going to Oxford. I will phone up Oxford um, University Press and say, would you like me to come in and show you my portfolio? And they said, yes, please. Thank you very much. So I came in, a <laughs> very innocent young <laughs> uh, illustrator. I was actually signing on the dole, getting um, sort of government maintenance um, thing at the time. Um, and and I went in and showed them my work. And they went, oh, that's very nice, that's very nice. And then they saw this, this, and they said, what is this? And I sort of told them, and they went, oh, it was one of these sets anyway. And I said, oh, well, I, I'm taking them to London to show to, um, to another publisher tomorrow. Oh, said the editor who was looking at my work. Do you, do you mind if I go and show this to somebody else? I'll, I'll be back in a minute. So off she went and I sat there feeling a bit awkward. And then she came back with my three other people who all came in, big smiles on their faces. Hello, hello. And, and, uh, and they said, well, we really like these. And I said, oh. And they said, you know, are you prepared to, um, prepared to, you know, let us have them? I said, well. And they explained that the very next week or in the next fortnight, the Oxford Reading Tree was launching and they needed little books like these, short books, short texts, um, to go in what they called their branch library. Uh, so they weren't officially in the reading scheme, but they would be available alongside the reading scheme and sort of worked out uh, to be in the right level, reading levels to go along with it. So they were kind of real books and not reading scheme books, but they'd be kind of graded to the level of the books that the kids were reading in the scheme. So I said, well, that sounds fantastic. And uh, so, so, the, so I hid them the next day when I went uh, to see the other publishers. And, and then uh, they came back to me and um, we started working on them. And they said, she shouldn't be a baby. She needs to be a toddler. So that was the first thing that changed. And so I started working on that. And these are the, um, these are the galleys of the galley proofs of the covers, uh, Lydia and her garden. So she changed quite a lot. And I love these now I look at them uh, because they're so innocent. <laughs> they're so fresh. And it, it, I, I, yeah, I think the, the, it's really hard to keep that looseness um, and maybe I just need to use a thinner pen. It's a much thinner pen than I use these days. It used to be a Rotring Isograph 0.25, I think the white one. And these are the galley proofs of the insides as well. So they came out and I was absolutely thrilled. A pack of six arrived in the post and I opened them up and my mum was there and she was saying, well, that's fantastic, that's fantastic. And I was feeling so proud of myself and she said, so what's next? And I realised that you can't just stop. So anyway, so these are now out of print with Oxford University Press and I have made them available again and you can get them in a new large print size from Amazon. 
uh, just I just thought it would be nice to know that you can still get them in one form or another they, they don't do any smaller than this so uh, I've made them available in this. so you'll find links down below to Amazon <clears throat> so here we have uh, the text roughs artwork all sorts of stuff in here so this is how the books came this is an original pack still in the uh, in the original wrapping stage three pack a the early learning center which was a a, a high street store which um, had lots of sort of worthy educational stuff for kids like an edu proper worthy educational right on toy shop for kids uh, really for parents i think really <laughs> it's, um, if you went in there you knew you were buying this sort of something educational for your kids uh, and they did this series, they did this uh, bind up version. It actually says Oxford University Press, but ELC and Early Learning Centre. So they commissioned this uh, bind up three stories in one, which is the way I've done the new edition. So they then came out. So we got in here. I don't know, that's just, I think that's a fairly recent sketch, that one. <laughs> what have we got? These are the bromides for all the. Uh, copyright text and stuff like that for the covers hmm. let's move that over there and here here we have a great pile of uh, roughs and I I didn't know how to do this nobody was teaching you to do this at art college um, it wasn't actually an illustration course but it, it, it was de facto everybody wanted to be an illustrator um, but they didn't teach you really how to put books together and to plan or anything like that so I really worked this out myself over time just just repetition and doing these little thumbnail boxes the, the, this kind of thing is really really useful if you are uh, planning to do something like this because if, if you're going to do it full size it, it's it's a lot of hard work so little thumbnail sketches you can draw much more quickly and you can see it so well. <laughs> what I did was I got a piece of paper and I folded it in half and then I put that in the typewriter and typed it so this is all hand typed there's no computers involved I didn't have a computer at this stage the ZX81 was out but nothing that you could really use for printing was out at that time so this is all done on the typewriter or by hand or oh, the letterhead there so this is uh, 1985, goodness me, <laughs> one post a day, you couldn't wait for emails, you just had to sit and wait <laughs> for the gate to creak, <coughs> <Pickling. laughs> the postman <laughs> would come and deliver the post, and, or not deliver the post, which is always a bit, uh, oh no post today, that's that. What do we have here? This is this is a bit later, I think. So this is another layout, and this this is just so that you can see the whole thing. This is 1985, but it's so you can see the whole thing in front of you, and see what needs to change, and you know how it's looking really. Uh, what have we got there? Oh, some little <laughs> pencil sketches slid in there. Various <laughs> letters from Oxford University Press. So, dear Sue, I need six more books quickly. Perhaps we should get together again and hatch a plot. Michael Bolden. Goodness me, that goes back. So that turned into a series of books called Victor, which I'll be telling you about soon. Now, this is a whole folder of Lydia artwork. And these are the folders for each story. And like that we've got lots of Chinese on there uh, because they all got printed in Singapore or China or somewhere and I'm not going to go through these now I'm going to go through each of these individually uh, in their own you'll find up here and down below you'll find there's a link to the Lydia playlist so you can find all these if you want I'm also going to be doing readings of these over on my story channel as well you find links down below for that as well this I think I've shown before this is called Lydia's Bible again. <laughs> and these are just learning to draw her from all sorts of different angles. But this is so tight here. 
uh, somehow I managed to loosen up from there. And these are other variations. And what is so bizarre when I look at this, this is meant to be Lydia. This actually looks like a younger sister who wasn't even born at the time. <laughs> and there are little things here that really do, do look like her at times. Um, so this is just working out clothes and things like that. Um, and learning to turn the character. That is such a trick. Um, uh, uh, and it's, it's 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 in your head. You've got to get this model of the character in your head that you can kind of turn around and draw from any angle. So this is kind of you know learning to do that different angles. The hair's not right at the time. The news was being read by a lady called Julia Somerville, and um, so I stole her hairstyle, which was also very similar to. Um, the one in Dynasty, the uh, uh, the main female character in Dynasty, the, the blonde, and she had this, this hair like that. So I kind of eventually stole that hair cut. And that's when it really started happening and started to get this character right. This look here, this is just so like Lydia's little sister. <laughs> when I was doing, originally doing all this and visiting and staying at my brother's house. Um, Lydia and I, we just got on incredibly well. Um, I don't know why, we, we just kind of understood each other, <laughs> even though she was a tiny baby. And uh, I don't know, you get, you just get that, don't you, sometimes? Um, so there's all this stuff here. Various, you see it's trying to working out from these little lines. This is really weird. This again, this is, it feels more like her bigger sister to me. Um, and, and now it's sort of changing here. It's sort of getting there slowly. A lot of this is tracing um, because you don't want to, you know, it's hard work starting a drawing from scratch. So tracing makes things a lot easier. You can just keep tracing through. So these are, that's sort of there. You know, I can see what I'm trying to do, but with as little pen work as possible is what I really need to do. And again, here's a little, quite a lot of pen work. Um, but the expressions are getting, and it's just learning to turn the character. And then here I have a whole lot of artwork that didn't make it. <laughs> so just have a look at these. I think didn't like that nose, I don't think. And this is just too tight somehow. She's very pretty there though, I think. And this, it's, it's just tightened up. And again here, I think this is tightened up. Um, she's quite sweet there. Um, I think this is, this was one that, yeah, definitely from the finished work but it didn't make it for some reason i can't think why there's something wrong no i don't know maybe it's all these marks i don't know <laughs> um and that's yeah the haircut's all wrong there and that again it's just too tight somehow um and this is too young there i think this is like a sample page three i think um that's much lighter isn't it much much freer but something went wrong with me i don't think i like the bread i think i had it red in the end of it. um these are potential covers and again she's a baby here and so that's just not right um mm, i don't think i like the cat's nose uh and again she's a baby um Oh, I don't know, something there I didn't like. I think she needed to be walking rather than just sort of standing. Oh, look at all the ducks, said Lydia. I think, I think the bread had to be red. There's something here tells me that it's just not finished because there should be more on the duck's wings. I think I just something went wrong, I didn't like it. I like that wallpaper, that's great. <laughs> uh, what have we got here? Yeah, no. Oh, oh, it's slightly creepy, isn't it? <laughs> There's things like that. A appropriateness that 
you, you kind of learn in children's books. It's self-editing, I suppose, and you start start out. Nobody tells you, oh, that's not right. I'm going to show you some um, dummies of books that didn't make it for just that reason, sort of, <laughs> eventually. Um, I don't know. I think I didn't like the green around the back. And that's gone all sort of wrong there. So, oh, surface unstretched. That's like a test for the paper or something. That's a tiny pinhole there. That's been up up on my notice board because uh, I used to smoke <laughs> 20, 30 marbles a day in those days. It's just, that's nicotine. <laughs> uh, Lydia and Mum went for a walk. There we go. Mm, here we are. This is too tight. It's too tight. And here's a potential cover again. And, and she's a baby, which is just not right. And still haven't got this sideways view of the cat. It's really quite difficult. Let's turn these around. Um, that's just too grey and brown and drab. Again, too br and and she's a baby again as well. But it's still very drab. I think I didn't like that house in the background because that just made that kind of takes you out of the story. You think, oh, what's that house over there? And you you should be concentrating on the ducks. <laughs> there we are. That's much better. Um, but I didn't like that for some reason. <laughs> And again, I, I had to drop this green background. It was just too much. And, and nowadays, well, I mean, then you could put all that in there. You know, it was called a mechanical tint. Uh, you could do all that in the background, but now you can do that easily in Photoshop. But I didn't know that then. So there you go. I will go through all those individual folders and tell you about the story behind each one and the little details and things and show you the original artwork for each one. There you go, that's a massive trip down memory lane for me. Uh, and thanks for still being here and watching. I'm going to go through the individual folders of artwork one by one and put them up here in the uh, Lydia playlist so you can find them all there. And you can also find links down below for all the stories that I'm putting over on the Story Channel. Thanks again for watching. Click down there and make sure you're subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing Channel. Keep coming back for lots more videos every week. In the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. Keep reading and doing books and illustration and stuff like that. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.